to hello hello everyone welcome where is everybody where are you guys viewing us from i'd be curious to know we get people from all over the country we have another field trip starting soon can everyone hear us okay Hopefully you can hear us. If not, let us know. Ah, Tawilla, Sophia, thank you. All right, fantastic. Eddie. Eddie. Taylorsville, thank you, Kim. Julie, down by Trolley Square. Matt Bates. Nice. All right. Well, hello, everybody. I'm Brad in the marketing department here at Utah's Hogle Zoo. Thanks for tuning in. We sure appreciate everybody taking time out of their valuable days to, to join us, to hear a little bit more about the animal kingdom, uh, a little bit more about what we're all doing up here at the zoo while we're closed during this period of time. Thanks to uh, everybody for tuning in. I see you guys scrolling through. As, as always, we appreciate your questions and comments, especially from the smaller tykes. So keep those questions and comments coming. Very exciting Facebook Live plan for you today, because guess what today is, everybody? We're gonna party for the planet. Today is Earth Day. Happy Earth Day, this April 22nd. And not only is it Earth Day 2020, but 2020 is also the 50th anniversary of the very first Earth Day that occurred in April of 1970. Now, I'm old enough to remember that first Earth Day, I hate to admit. And I remember what a big deal it was in 1970. I was in junior high, and we all rallied around this cool new event. Well, as important as it was 50 years ago, guess what? It's even more important today to take care of Mother Earth and do everything we can to reduce, reuse, and recycle. Got some very special guests for us on this Earth Day. We got Janice from our animal care team. And even more so, we got over here. Who is this, Janice? Who are we looking at? This is Lemon. Lemon has been with us a long time at the zoo. He is one of our spider monkeys. Uh, Lemon is approximately 42 years old. 42 years old. Yeah, so we wow. We take great care of our primates because you'd be surprised at how old they could get. Uh, Lemon's a favorite here at the zoo, not just with our guests, but she's a favorite among staff as well. I've known, uh, I've known Lemon for all of my time here at the zoo, and she is indeed a favorite of mine. Um, and she's doing, she's doing well. Now we saw her, uh, or, or sorry, I keep saying she, we saw him eating uh, earlier t today. And uh, what, uh, what does it take to, to care for her? our two spider monkeys. We have Ebony here somewhere as well. Yeah, Ebony is, I think she's watching the Howler monkeys. Oh, gotcha. Right, I see her all the way over there. Can I come join us? We'll see. She's also another fan favorite. favorite. Um, yeah, they're quite vocal. And, and uh, so when they when they do see some of their friends or their the visitors and guests that, that frequent a lot, and they might recognize them, they actually do really cute vocalization. They do. And, and uh, it's kind of like a greeting that just says, hi, how are you? Uh, so, for caring for colobus, um, a little bit more difficult than you might think. Or, not, par pardon me, colobus, the uh, spider monkeys. Um, they have a special diet. Uh, they get fruits and vegetables only, and they get oh. uh, this chow, it, which, which it's a biscuit, and it kind of has all the vitamins and minerals that they need, and it keeps them very healthy. Uh, we actually we also have excellent health care at the zoo because we have our own veterinarians. Uh, that work very closely with us. Uh, we also do, oh, I think he's gonna have a nap here. Um, we also do a lot of training with them so that you right. know, if we need to see into their mouths or uh, possible uh, injection or getting them into a crate, keepers can do that using positive reinforcement. And so uh, we, we work really closely with them, although we never go in with them, we work quite closely with them to be able to monitor their health every single day. And we also like to provide them with a lot of fun things and enrichment and stuff like that. It keeps their brains, keeps them active, keeps them, um, 
you know, they're foraging for food. It helps them, you have to manipulate food. Maybe if there's it's in a boomer ball, which you'll see in, in all the uh -huh. Um But yeah, they, they like to work for food. And so we might give them some puzzle feeders and stuff like that. And it just kind of keeps them stimulated because what they're going to do in the wild is spend a lot of time foraging for food. And here, we just want to try to keep them active throughout the day. And so they have to look for their food as well. So oh. you get snacks and then a nap. What a life, right? I, no. And, and <laughs> soak it up in the sun. It's ideal. We're getting a lot of people tuning in who love lemon. They're uh -huh. saying, hi, lemon. Uh -huh. We miss lemon. All of you folks out there tuning in who love lemon, or ebony for that matter, how about making a donation to the zoo? It would sure go a long way to helping us. Thank you, Kara, for your donation. Uh, growing up, I always loved you know, monkeys, and my favorite species of monkey was always spider monkeys. Where are spider monkeys found in the world? Uh, they are called New World Primates, so that means they are from... Uh, Central and South America. Now tell us a little bit about n New World versus Old World. I think that's a fascinating uh, t topic. Right, so it works perfect that we have some side by side. So the spider monkeys being New World monkeys, their noses are a little bit different. You can see that you can see their, their nostrils a little bit more. Uh -huh. um, they also have prehensile tails. Does anybody know what prehensile tails means? Hey, that's a great question to ask our viewers. Hey, does anybody know what a prehensile tail is? What does that mean? You've heard that term. We'll give, uh, we'll give, some, minutes, give, yeah. give people some seconds to reply. Mm -hmm. That's your question for the day, gang. Yeah. What is a prehensile tail compared to just a, a regular tail? Right. Uh, that's, that's great. So let me see some of these questions rolling in. Thank you, Ashley. That's right. And, um, you know, short, if any, tails, right? Old world monkeys, they have yeah, short. Old world, some of them like a stump tail macaque, a very there you animal go. tail. Uh -huh. um, but when you're going to see our colobus, you'll see how they have such a long, big, beautiful tail. Indeed. Oh, Christina, a prehensile tail allows them to hold on to trees exactly. and limbs. Exactly. So it's almost like another appendage. It helps them hang on. So it's great for locomotion. Maybe they want to hold some food in it. Um, whereas with the new world or the old world monkeys, there's a lot more for balance and stuff like that for jumping through the trees. The spider monkeys usually brachiate or swing through the trees. So really, the the best way to determine a new world versus an old world is by the prehensile tail, That's the existence of a prehensile tail or not. Not true. Okay, what? <laughs> you can also have uh, calatrichids, which are tamarins and marmosets. They don't have prehensile tails. There you go. There's also squirrel monkeys. They don't have prehensile tails. Oh. Yeah, so uh, a lot of interesting facts, uh, especially between all the species of primates. There's so many It's so things. fascinating. It, it really is. I'm not sure if you can hear in the background, Ebony's talking. Oh, that's Ebony. That's, that's Ebony talking back there. Might not hear it through the mics, but I can hear it over here. Yeah. Now, Janice, why don't we uh, just cross the pathway here? Sure. And uh, these guys are well loved, too. Mm-hmm. And we've got right here, who is this we're so looking at? this is our latest pride and joy. Her name is Pepper. She's about six months old. Uh, this is our troop of colobus monkeys. Pepper is just adorable. So Pepper has her own unique story. Uh, I know we've had a Facebook Live about her before, but right. just to keep you updated, um, Pepper was born to Sophia, but Sophia was a first time mom. And sometimes first time moms are not sure exactly what to do with the baby. This happens in the wild, happens in captivity. It's not, it's, it's not uncommon. Uh, so what happened is we came in and found Pepper one morning. Oh, and that is actually her, her mom. And oh, it these is. are some nice, nice interactions because before her mom was a little bit nervous of her, wasn't sure what to do. Uh, so as keepers and as, as our primate team, we stepped in and we raised Pepper. We had to stay with Pepper 24 hours a day, make sure she got her bottles, enough nutrition. And primates, um, they have to, they really need their mothers and their family groups. It's very important for them for social learning, just to identify as a primate and learn everything they need to know. So we had to do that as keepers. You know, we would uh, make sure she could cling to us and she would 
be able to locomote. We built her, uh, we had a separate little area where she lived beside her family, um, but we were her parents. And so we made Thank sure you, to have the same environment that her parents were in. Uh, quite an effort is involved, 24-7. It really is an incredible accomplishment to get Pepper to where she is today, thriving, doing well in the troop. Uh, and credit to you, Janice, and the rest of the team, Aaron and the team, just an incredible accomplishment. And we've been, fall as a staff, we've been following her accomplishment all year uh, since she was born. And it really is a, a remarkable because there's um, never any guarantees. Right, and right? what we wanted to be very sure of was that she remained a monkey. So exactly. we didn't want to you know, baby her, or turn her into Thank a you, little Mary. human. We wanted to make sure she was still going to be a monkey. So when we reintroduced her to her family, she would know how to act. And that was very, very important for us. Now let's talk a little bit about uh, pr primates because uh, we've gotten questions uh, for some other uh, species that we've done lives around. They do not make good pets. No, no, that's right. Um, Whether colobus, any primate. Any primate. Um, and that was something I touched on a little bit with Pepper. We needed to make sure she could grow up to be a monkey. And so it was our goal to get her in as soon as possible. That wasn't a choice to take her out to raise her. It was in an emergency situation where we had to do that. Otherwise, you always want to leave your the babies with the mothers in the family group. They get the proper nutrition. They learn proper behaviors. Um, just even, even um, physical physical characteristics and physical behaviors that they do, their, their actions. You know, if, if Pepper were starting to do these funny behaviors like a human, then her mom would look at her and say, hey, you're strange, you're not a monkey. Oh. So we wanted to really make sure that you know, she knew monkey behaviors and monkey vocalizations. And so that was another reason why it was important to keep her close to her family. Now, now people are asking a lot, which is a great question, about the types of enrichment that they get and what do they do all day, how do they play? We do have some pieces of enrichment out right now. Why don't you explain kind of what those are and how those work? Oh, those are our little um, boomer balls and they have a ball inside and they are painted especially for Earth Day. Uh, and thank you to our volunteers who did that. Uh, so what we would do is you would just hide some peanuts, call this like peanuts. And so we'd hide some peanuts in there. And like I was saying earlier with the spider monkeys, you um, hide some food in there and it kind of mentally stimulates them. They're naturally foraging animals. So what they do is, is they're gonna look around the exhibit for food. And this was just one of the ways uh, we put their food out today. So I'm guessing they already found all the peanuts. Yeah, we were a little late. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, they came out and got them right away. They do love their peanuts. Now where are colobus uh, found? Colobus are in, in where are they African native species. To? African? Equ Equatorial Africa. Uh-huh. Yeah, several different species of, um, of black and white colobus. And our troop leader up there, he has a, his back to us, is Sifu. Okay. Uh, so he's the father of Pepper. Oh. And the one that Pepper's spending the most time with right now is Violet. This guy right there, gang. And so Violet and her daughter Dahlia came to us uh, last summer. And it was, it was kind of a, you know, it was, a, it was a blessing in disguise because Violet, who is a very good mother, ended up really wanting Pepper. Oh. So it really helped us with the introduction that Violet would try to pick up Pepper and carry her and all those things. So it really, she made a big difference in our success too. Now is that Violet right so there Violet. who's with Pepper? Violet is with Pepper. Uh -huh, that's Dahlia what I thought. Is being crazy. Dahlia is, is uh, almost two years old. So she is a lot of fun. <laughs> wow. Dahlia is great fun. Uh, people are commenting on how beautiful their tails are. Right. Just they gorgeous. Are, and and does the black here's another question that somebody asked does the black and white coloring help them camouflage in the wild uh, or i i wouldn't uh, say that especially yeah because of how, the, the, how um you know the coat flows and it's very thank beautiful. you cole and that actually is almost a detriment to the call this because what i happens wondered in 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 poaching and whatnot is sometimes they look at that and see how beautiful that coat is and they're like oh we as humans we want it so and that leads to poaching. oh sure yeah and then that also leads to the pet trade where someone might come in and you know maybe uh poach some of these monkeys and then take the babies for pets now nash and presley age 10 and 6 
are asking what they eat in the wild. Colobus are leaf-eating monkeys. They have leaf very, eaters. very special stomachs for that. They will eat leaves and bark and shoots, sometimes berries, uh, but mostly leaves. And so here at the zoo, we give them a lot of romaine lettuce, some kale, spinach, different types of greens and celery. We just want to make sure we, we try our best to mimic the diet in the wild. It's probably a lot more nutritious than those too, than just regular leaves like kale and all that for them. Is what, is well, that? It would definitely, and, and that does happen in captivity is sometimes our monkeys are a little too healthy uh, because they do get a lot of, <laughs> a lot of <sighs> nutrition at the zoo. No. And we do have to be careful how much we feed them because we don't want to overfeed them. And especially when we like to train them or give them treats like peanuts. We don't want to give too many. That's a good point. That's a good point. Someone's curious about their um, uh, their endangered status. Are they are they endangered? Are they threatened? What's their status? You know, uh, colobus monkeys. I, I, they're not threatened. I think endangered. I I'm, I apologize. I didn't catch up on my numbers. Thank you, Troy. <laughs> um, but yes, like I, with most primate species, they're endangered. Some are critically endangered. Some are vulnerable uh, based on the species. Uh, look at Dolly. Look at look at Pepper's little Pepper face. Pepper is gonna start having a nap here. She's curled <laughs> up in the sun. Oh. So what happens with the colobus is they tend to eat a lot, eat so much of this leafy material that they spend a lot of time resting. So if you're coming to look for a bunch of activity, colobus will be be active more so in the morning because once they eat quite a bit, they definitely are gonna have a nap. Yeah. They like to take long naps. But I, I could, uh, yeah, Ebony's still chatting over Yeah, there. why don't we, can we walk around and get sure. a little bit of Ebony? Sure, Let's walk around. Ebony is, is up to. Um, I can give you, uh, here's a little fact about primates and why they are so special to the earth and why we need to keep uh, primates protected. Is, so when primates eat a lot of fruit and, and berries and stuff like that, and in the wild, those fruits and berries and stuff have seeds inside. So what happens is we call them natural seed, uh, seed dispersants because primates, once they, they eat the fruit, the seeds come out. Well, they're going to be out it, coming out in their in their feces, and then what happens is they travel through the forest and deposit seed throughout the forest, and that just helps. It helps stimulate the growth of the forest. That's so fascinating. So in their own way, and this is true with other animals as well, they do their job in taking care of Mother Earth um, by spreading seeds and being really pollinators, uh, if you yeah, exactly. if you want to look at it that way. And, and folks, uh, you know, we want to encourage all of you to maybe put together a pollinator garden in your yard. There's instructions on the internet how to do that. It really makes a huge difference. And, and quite frankly, it's, they're beautiful, attracting insects and bees. Um, we're doing a lot up here. Even though we're closed, we have much going on today um, with some work being done down in Emigration Creek um, and some uh, things that you guys can do to help us down at the Jordan River as well. So go to our website to learn more about how you can help the zoo with our many conservation efforts. We love Earth Day. We call it Party for the Planet, and we've held events over the years. So much going on. Please spend part of today learning more about the importance of Earth Day in your world and how it can impact uh, all that we do. Thanks to everybody for their donations. These guys are, are just some of our favorites. Come see them at Primate Forest once we reopen. Lemon, Ebony, all of our wonderful colobus. Of course, the incredible Janice. Thank you for your time today. You're very welcome. Uh, it turned out to be a lovely day. It, it rained earlier here in northern Utah, but it's beautiful now. It's true, and the primates, they don't love the rain. So we, oh, they so wanted to stay what, inside, what first? So, so we timed that just right. Yeah, perfect, yeah. Especially now when, the, like, lemons out here sunning himself. It's warm. They really, really enjoy it. Ebony's being antisocial. She is. She is. She had a lot to say. Le lemon is a lemon is a ham for sure. We're right next to the the lions over here at Lions Hill. So hey, we're keeping things up and operating here at Hogle Zoo, folks. Hopefully, it won't be 
much longer before we reopen and you can come say hi to Lemon, come say hi to Pepper. But, but, but I would guess most of you have not even met Pepper yet, yeah. right? Because when we closed, she was not on public display. So uh, definitely make a plan when we reopen to come introduce yourself to Pepper. I know she'd love to see you. Of course, Ebony and Lemon are here as well. Primate Forest is a wonderful exhibit here at the zoo. It's been open, gosh, uh, about 25 years or so. So uh, come uh, join us once we open. And thank you to everybody for your donations today. If you love spider monkeys like I do, and if you love colobus like I do, please make a donation to the zoo. It goes a long way in helping us. There's also some original art available on the zoo website, both from our animals and from the zoo's art director. So take a look at that. We sure appreciate it and all that you guys are doing to support us during this time. Until tomorrow, and we'll have another Facebook field trip planned for you. Thanks for tuning in again. This is Brad in the marketing department reminding all of you to please be champions for wildlife, and we'll see you then. Take care now. Bye-bye.